Good morning everyone. It's Wednesday morning. It's fairly dull wet morning as you can see there's plenty of rain on the ground. But uh, yeah, I'm going to do a final final video on the the new the new cattle shed, the new build. Uh, cattle are in it now over three weeks. Um, it's full probably about two weeks. Uh, there's plenty of young stock in it. Uh, pens are fairly full at the minute. They're not going to stay this full. Um, there is going to be a little bit of a thinning out process. These cattle uh, they have been all out and dosed a couple of times now at this stage. Uh, and uh, they've been IBR'd and all that stuff. You've seen that in other videos. But um, what we are going to do, we're going to take them out again now before Christmas. Probably won't be until maybe next Monday or Tuesday. And we'll clip their bags, and there's some heifers mixed in uh, with with bulls here. So we we'll want to get them out before Christmas. Uh, so many, I don't think that. I think most of the heifers is actually they're all mixed in here in this uh, middle pen here, um, or big up hen. But yeah, that's the plan is to do that. Um, drinkers come at last. Uh, if you remember in the last video, it was really all that we, one of the final things we had to do was to get the drinkers. Um, but the drinkers did come, and if you remember, let's close up with a skate. If you remember, they were a little bit, they were a little bit slower coming, but, uh, yeah, they did come. Uh, we got the drinkers from Condon Engineering, and... Uh, they were a little bit later than what they said, but they're not not too bad. There's, uh, they come up trumps with them in in the end. Um, they were very helpful in all fairness when we were when we were ordering the drinkers. They they knew like we were we weren't buying the gates themselves off themselves, uh, which is what would usually be done. You'd, as a lot of you probably know, they would supply all the all the kit for. Uh, penning out sheds and stuff like that and drinkers and all that so um, they knew we weren't going to buy the drinkers off them, or, sorry the gates off them just the drinkers and they give us a complete, they printed out a complete diagram of uh, all the dimensions needed for the for the gate, to, of the drinker to fit into the gate and they also give us a, a template a piece of flat steel like this here with all the proper holes cut out in it and uh, there's, you see there's holes cut in everywhere and there's large circular holes then for pipe work to fish through and so they give us the templates for that as well so they are very very helpful in all fairness uh, uh, and we are very happy with the drinker uh, you can see it's they're very neat uh, fairly compact uh, they have a little rump bar built into them and all that just comes completely in the one unit and there is six uh, galvanised bolts, bolts in on each side just holds it in place um, the pipe then feeds through you can see the drinker is in here under this or the, the ball valve sorry is in under this uh, cover uh, and the pipe for that feeds right through here and comes the whole way right down the gate round the corner and then down into the ground right up the top so you can see it's, it's completely closed in you can't see any pipe hook at all there's a little cover here that was made up and uh, just put on with a couple of tech screws just to cover it so it doesn't get damaged so you don't see any pipe hook at all uh, the drinker itself uh, it's the tip over type um, that's the largest uh, it's like center gate drinker that they do they do a, they do a six foot that's a four foot uh, tip over drinker they do a six foot tip over drinker as well which can only be bolted to the wall so um, look at you probably could have this gate is that strong it would have been able to to support or to walk a, a, a six foot drinker because it's it's made out of, out of strong stuff um, but they did prefer not to so we just went along with the went along with the, the four foot uh, but you can see it's, it's very simple to tip it over uh, it's very simple design just lift that up and away she goes just tip it over and pop it back in. Uh, so we're finding that it's piped off now. Uh, as long as it's piped off, but a week and a half. Uh, and we're finding that you only have to tip it out maybe once a week, twice a week at most. 
uh, they don't dung that much in it, but can it, they can dung in it. You know, if they, you know yourself, if they're dunging and cough, cough at the same time, it could shoot out six foot behind them or further. So uh, it it can happen, but it doesn't happen too often. Uh, but yeah, tip it over. It's very simple. Just empty it all out and just pop it back down, and you can hear the water filling back into it again. The, it's a very, very good design. The, the actual ball valve itself never, it doesn't move. It stays in its normal position and the whole drinker swivels around it. So it's fairly impressive now the way it works. But yeah, very happy with the drinkers. Uh, two of them are now in and the uh, cattle have gotten used to them very quickly. Uh, I'd love to have those drinkers in the other shed, the other, the, the other main cattle shed, the main beef and shed. Um, there, there's a, a great. We weren't sure if the four foot would have enough water capacity, and it's no problem. It's enough water capacity. Once you have any kind of pressure at all on your water coming in, the, there's you never come in at a time where the, it's under pressure. It's always there's plenty of water in it. So, yeah, four foot's plenty capacity for it. Uh, but yeah, no, very happy with the shed so far. The feeding passage of this shed, uh, if you remember, I probably said it in the, one of the other videos. It is, it is slightly narrower than the the feeding passage in the, the previous shed that we built, and we were a little navy about it. Maybe it wasn't going to be too narrow, or, uh, or what way would it work out? Uh, we also kept the feeding boxes straight up. And I have to say, very happy with, with how it's worked out. Uh, six four is awkward, but once the twenty eight fifty is back on the feeder, it'll be very very simple. You can see the tire marks of the six four. The six four has wide tires on, it and you have to keep right tight along the timbers for for to have as little spillage as possible with the with the feeder. But yeah, once the twenty eight fifty is back onto it. Uh, There'll be no no issues with that. It'll be it'll be easy easy going. Uh, we also we sheeted the bottom of this door here. Uh, the reason being, it wasn't sheeted initially. Uh, it was it is sheeted in the previous shed, and we didn't sheet it initially in this shed. Uh, it's just a light bit of light galvanized uh, sheeting. Um, yeah, the reason being, you'll have cattle that especially these these ones here won't be too bad, but. I know the the bulls up in the, the other shed. If you hadn't got the sheeting on, they start scratching their heads on the door if the door is closed over. And they'd have the galvanized pushed out in the first couple of days. So it's just a little bit of extra protection on the galvanizing that they, they, they don't abuse it. Uh, but yeah, we've done that on both doors. The other door that up on the, up the top here is done as well. But yeah, that's... That's really it. Uh, very happy with with how it all turned out. I have to say so far, there's nothing that nothing that we'd change or or do differently at the minute. Uh, the barriers were all was going to be the barriers were all was going to be these kind of barriers because we have them in the other shed now for that shed's up nearly ten years, so we knew what we were getting with those, and uh, yeah, they were always going to be that type of barrier. Um, and very ha happy with this this design of shed the, with, with the overhang here. There's great air going through the shed all the time. It's never stuffy. Uh, like over the past week or so, the weather has went from being fairly fairly cold uh, with plenty of frost to uh, being fairly mild a few days later. And it doesn't matter. Whatever whatever the weather is, the, the shed temperature stays fairly similar. So, yeah, that's that's really it. Uh, I have a little bit of drone footage now. I'm just going to stick up on the on the on the end of this. So, hope you enjoyed that. So, that's it for today. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.